starting off from where we ended in our last video you will remember that we had just finished creating a new login page which we no longer need so I'm going to move on and open up our dashboard page I'm not really ready at this point to actually complete the dashboard because it's probably going to be one of the last things that we actually do in this tutorial However, I'm going to use the dashboard page in order to start off and create our navigational components. So let's start off as I normally do, adding the browser component. From here, I'm going to add my nav bars. You could go into this nav bar area here and fully build out your own nav bar if you wanted to, but for the sake of speed, I'd rather just go to the headers and choose something that I know um, Waffle has already created and put in there for us. I know that after this home nav item, I would like a drop down. So after that, I want a nav drop down. I know that in this area here, I'd also like a drop down. So before that, I'm going to say add before, add a nav drop down. And I can go through and I can delete what I actually don't require. So I don't want that any longer. I don't want that any longer. I'm not going to be needing this. So that can be removed. I'm not going to be needing that. And I'm not going to be needing this element any longer. This I would actually like um, two of them. Just make sure that you obviously selected on the correct element, which is why I keep this open the whole time. Uh, make sure you select it on the right element before you hit the delete. This over here, I would like to change the wording to fruit juice international. The home is actually going to change to dashboard. This particular drop down over here is going to change to my user management area. This one is going to change to our product management area. And the last one over here that will always remain on the right is just going to say user. This is where you're going to get to your logout action as well as uh, your profile action, etc. If you actually want to see what's inside here, you can either toggle the preview mode on or if you like just for speed you can hold down the command key on a on an apple uh, probably the control key on a windows machine i would assume uh, let go of the command key when you're done and all these particular things will be editable at that point so under here as the first one i'd like to make this profile the second one I would like to make the global settings and the last one I will make our logout just because each of these things are going to be shown to different user roles um, I mean a profile and the logout are going to be shown to each and every single person um, the global settings will only ever be shown to a proper administrator. What I'd like to do on the global settings here is I'm going to go above there, click the plus sign, and add a drop down divider. Click on it again, click underneath, add another drop down divider just to make my menu a little bit better looking. From the product management area, hold down my command key, pull it out. I would like three different things in here. One is add product, another is view product, and the last is manage pricing. So here we are going to do an add product. Here we are going to do view products. And here we are going to have our manage pricing. On the um, these two are almost as though they are one group. This is a slightly different thing. So between there and there, I'd like to add a drop down on my menu. Hold down my command key, pull that out. What I would like to put under here is six different elements. So let's go ahead here. From here, we're going to do our add 
franchise. Yeah, we are going to do view franchise. Underneath that, we are going to want a divider. This one here, we'd like another one. Underneath that, we'd like another divider. Here we can duplicate that. We can use this area here to just pull that divider in between those two. And we can duplicate out our last one. So we've got all six of our elements. Let's go here, change this to add store. Change this to view stores, because it's going to be multiple. Now we are going to add, add user, and as the last one, we're going to have view users. Now, as I had already explained earlier, um, we are going to have different user roles that are going to do different things. So if you imagine that the user roles are going to affect each page in a different way. On some pages um, where every single user is going to be allowed to see every single thing on there, so let's say an all logged in user is going to be able to see the dashboard um, all the way from the lowest role all the way to the highest role of administrator can all access the dashboard. Under those sort of circumstances, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make sure that um, all the various roles are set within the actual layer of items to take away what we cannot allow other people to actually see. So from the server connect area, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add some sort of a check to actually make sure that we are checking what the role of the various users are. So let's go ahead and create that now. I'm going to put it also within the actual login action because I feel that it's sort of part of it. Once they logged in, I'm going to have a logout action within here and I'm going to also have the role checker within here too. I just feel that they sort of fit together. So add an action file. We'll call this say role checker for this particular action. We don't have any form elements, we're not putting any post variables, we're not putting in any get variables. So pretty much what we are wanting to do is create a database connection to start with. We had already created it in the last step, so we can just hit the folder, call up that connection. We're going to right click on there, and we're going to call in the security provider. We're going to say, um, add the security provider step. Again, we've already created the security provider. We've already created all the roles. So at this point, we want to hit this folder. And we see that we have a bit of a problem. No items. What you'll find is within this role over here, where we created the security provider, we actually forgot, well, I forgot, to link that security provider anyway. So we're just going to dump out the security provider. Save this step for a moment. Go back to the login action. Go to the security provider. And I'm going to click this little link button, view action file security providers, sec fjr will be created and linked, are you sure? Yes. This will link that security provider so every single action that we create from now has access to it. Go back here, right click, add our security provider again, click on the folder, now we have access to it. All the same settings, everything that we set up is already within there. We're then going to go here, we're going to add a security restrict step. This is going to restrict not only for admins or, or franchise admins, not only for branches, not only for franchise admins, not only for admins. This is for all logged in users. So that is already correct the way it's set. And what we need to do next is we're going to add a database query. Now, pretty much what we want to do we are wanting to query our actual database and find what the role of the user is. So pretty much that is all we need to do. So let's go ahead and create that. I'm going to change the name from query1 over here just to make it easier for myself. And I'm going to call this query underscore role. Go to the query. 
query folder. The table that we want to query is our users table. So let's go to the users. And what about the users do we want to query? Well, we're going to call in the ID of the user because we'll probably be using that as we go. And we want to call in the actual role itself. Under the condition step over here, quite simply, all we need to do is go to the ID users and make sure that that is equal to whatever the security provider picks up. So the security provider secfjr on the identity field is going to have to match that. And that is pretty much it as far as adding our role checker in is concerned. The next step to this is to go and actually assign these roles to the various um, elements. Let's make sure that this is saved in the meantime. Action file successfully saved. And um, what we're going to need to do is in order to check the role, we need to actually tell App Connect to query what server connect has done. I mean, this is a completely separate step. This is all server side, this is all client side. And so we have to get these two to mold together. After app, I'm going to go right click app and I'm going to go down to data over here and I'm going to go to server connect. And all I'm pretty much doing here is making a server connect action that will go out and look at the server to actually see what's going on. So I'm going to call the server connect role checker just so it's easily identifiable. These can build up quite quickly. What action do I actually want it to do? I want it to do the role check for me. Um, do I want this to have no auto load on? No, I need that to auto load. So when this page loads up, this query will run at the same time and query the server. So that is all that I actually need to do for the role checker step. At this point I can say, okay, what do I want the actual user to see when they when they come into the site? If they are a well an administrator, I want them to see everything that's up here. If they're a branch admin, I want them to see different stuff. If they are a branch or a user, I rather say I want them to see different things. So global settings, I know for a fact that that particular one, I don't want anybody but the actual um, the actual administrator themselves to see. If I took this away, this line underneath would also need to be taken away. So keep in mind that obviously if this closed up, I want to take away this and either this line or either that line just so we have profile and then a line and then log out underneath. So at this point, let's just go and we're gonna go to the dynamic attributes. It's not an event, nothing is fired, nothing is being clicked upon. It's an attribute of this particular element. And I'm gonna go display. And from here, I'm going to choose whether I want to show or I want to hide. Now, this can be a little bit tricky. Um, do you want to show it when it's the admin, or do you want to hide it when it's the branch admin, or hide it when it's the user? In this case, it's easier to show it when it's an admin because, well, there's only one parameter that needs to be put into there. So show when server connect data query role u role. What does your role need to actually be? So your role needs to be there. We'll add an operator. The operator for this is going to be equal to. And what does it need to be equal to? It needs to be equal to not a dynamic value, but a literal value over here. So it needs to be equal to admin. So select, so select. And we can go through and we can even take a look at it over here. And what you can see that it's done is it's add, added double quotes around there and double quotes around there, which pretty much tells me that it is actually doing a proper literal check. As you can see, it's disappeared directly from here. So it's quite nice because it helps us to identify. And I will show you how 
through Webplay, you can actually see this um, if you wanted to. But for now, this actually works quite well for me because I know that I don't want to see these particular things right now. Once again, do the exact same thing here. Do I want to display that line? I want to show it. When do I want to show it? I would like to show it when the data returned from the U roll is equal to what admin. Simple as that. And we select that again. So now that is what a user is going to see. Under the product management step, the product management, I do not want this to be available that, 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 or that for that matter to anybody but the admin. So this one is a nice simple one. We take the entire drop down as it is here, keeping in mind that obviously when you select a chair, what is it selecting? It's selecting the toggle. We can either click over there to select the nav drop down. We can click here once to select the nav drop down. I'll just reselect it there, just so we start off. I'll show you the third way. The third way is, is that down here, you can actually select your different things. This can be a bit tricky. On a larger screen, it's not as bad. You can scroll across and you can say, okay, what do I actually want to select? I want to select that one. I've clicked it and it's highlighted there. So on the nav drop down, I will do the exact same thing. Attributes, display, show when. I want to show when the query returned from U roll is equal to, and what must it be equal to? Admin. Make sure that this is kind as of literal. Select and select. And now that particular menu goes away. In this menu, add franchise, view franchise. These two elements, again, and this line over here will only be available to a full administrator. So once again, select that particular element, go down in our attributes, display show when to show when the query of the u roll is equal to sorry that is not equal to and i need it again equal to admin select select view franchise dynamic attributes display show To return from U roll is equal to admin. This line, exactly the same thing. This will be our last one to display at this point. Show when the data returned from U roll. equal to admin select select so that's pretty much how this is going to look at this point for the add store view stores add user and view users um, we could obviously go about this and say okay that we only want this to be shown when an admin or an, a franchise admin if admin um, is logged in or we could say that we only want this to show when when um, a branch is added in obviously that would be the wrong way around so in this particular case I'm going to tell this to hide when a branch is in here that way it will automatically show when anything but a branch is there so an admin will see it and a franchise admin will see it so I'm going to click that dynamic attributes for this Display instead of show this time, we're going to say hide. When do we want to hide this? We're going to hide this element when the query returned from U roll is equal to, and 
this time it's going to have to be equal to a branch. Select that, select that. So we're going to say hard when here and we are going to hard when you roll equals and yeah we're going to say branch select select now obviously this can start getting quite tedious at times there is luckily some easier ways to do this um, so i'll show you at this point you could if you wanted to literally take that highlight the entire thing okay so triple click on there copy it into your clipboard go to your line go to your attributes display hard and instead of going through all that you can just paste it in when you're finished pasting i would always use the tab key to enter that in i know it sounds strange but for some reason the enter key doesn't always do what you want it to do the tab key to get to another field does however seem to make that attribute take and you will certainly find that out when adding um, links to certain elements display hard when pop that in and we are done which i think is a lot quicker to do it that way so if you wanted to you could do a singular one once you're happy that you've got the right conditions and the correct dynamic attributes to that you can then just take that and copy and paste it across to everything else that needs the exact same attribute the two last things that we're going to need to do here is we're going to need to make uh, the logout action work and then obviously we're going to have to go through every single one of these navigational items and add where that navigation will actually take us when it's clicked upon so at this point i think let's go ahead and uh, sort out the logout action back within the server connect it is a server role we need this to actually uh, log out from the server remove the cookie um, to do a proper logout and that is all server based so let's go here we'll call this log out action okay that's nice and descriptive this is a very simple one it takes no global attributes it literally requires a step of where is your database connection up there we do not care about restricting this particular step to a particular security level or anything like that so we are going to go to our security provider we're going to add the security provider we're going to link it over there and as our last step we're going to go back to the security provider and add security logout from the provider sec fjr save our action when we're done pretty much as simple as that that is the server side to that done um, what we are going to have to unfortunately do is we are still going to have to tell our client side what we have done so in order to do this once again we need to run an action within here so we'll go after the role checker we will say add afterwards we're going to add a data of a server connect this particular server connect just to make it easier for us to figure out what it is this is the server connect logout what action do we want to run from the login step we want to run the logout action and select that do we want this to auto load when this page refreshes or when somebody goes into this page we really do not want this to auto load what do we actually want to happen when somebody clicks on uh, clicks on the button and the button fires this particular server action we want a success we will get back to it because i think it will just make more sense if we go back onto that in a small moment so let's go here quickly we're going to actually select our physical logout button and with that selected we want to go and do something so let's make we could always go to the link element over here 
but that particular link element actually really has nothing to do with um, with the app connect framework so I'm not going to use this whatsoever in fact I'm going to remove that out of there and hit the tab afterwards I don't want it to do that I am going to go down to the dynamic sorry I'm going to go down to the dynamic events clicking is an event what type of event is it it is a clicking event and what do I want to happen on mouse click I would like this to do something what do I want it to do the action is the logout and I want that logout action to physically load we'll add this to the group of actions and there's no need for me to change anything within here and I can say select so when that happens it's going to physically run the logout action it will log us out the problem is is that it will keep us on this particular page which is not exactly what we wanted to do so what we're going to do here is we are going to go back to our logout action and we're going to say that when this action has successfully run we want it to redirect our browser back to the sort of home page once again it is an event not an attribute the event is that the server connectors has physically loaded so when this is successful what would we like us our browser to do we've already added the browser extension we want it to go to we'll select that and where do we want it to go yeah we need to wrap this in single quotes in order to be a literal um, a literal element and we pretty much want this to go back to our our home page so under these circumstances we want this to go back to index.php which is our home file our first file that we ever started with so index.php tab out of there select and that should be it so our logout action is working the various elements are only going to show when there are different user levels going into it let's save this dashboard and i think we should probably go and test this at this point so let's go to our browser here we back are oh, here we are back in chrome scooby do and wall Submit. You get in here, as you can see, user management has nothing under it. So we've got a bit of a problem over there. And we go over here, and user has nothing. Well, user's got profile logout. So let's just test the actual logout action itself. I'm going to say logout. It takes us back to the logout page, and it seems that we are successfully logged out. To test this for a moment, I just want to go back to the dashboard page php and i can see these things back so i wouldn't say that that is correct what we're going to add is we're going to add a security restrict step to say that when a person is unauthorized that something needs to happen so let's just log out again and we'll go and fix this up a little bit so as far as that drop down is concerned let's go back into Ripla. I'll say user management uh, control uh, I mean command on a Mac to select this let's go and grab this copy now let's just think about this in a moment if we want this to hide it is exactly the same dynamic attributes display hard when and when b-roll equals branch so that should fix that up. Just want to quickly go and test that that is actually working. We go back into here, log in again, Scooby Do. Uh, this was a uh, Wattler demo. Sorry, I got that wrong. Walmart demo. Walmart demo submit back in user management is still showing i'm just going to do a full refresh on my browser to make sure uh, 
So we did not save. Yes, I've still got this little blue icon over here. Let's save this. Let's go back to Google Chrome. Let's do a full refresh. And now it is gone. So we only have access to user, which has profile and logout, and we can only see the dashboard. That is if we were um, a branch level of, of role. Let's go here quickly and test this out. So I'm going to change this U role here and I'm going to change it to F admin just so I can see what that actually does. Let's go back to Google Chrome. We're going to refresh our browser. Under user management, we now have add store, view stores, add user, view users. Under here, we still only have profile and logout. We will quickly go and change the role of this user to a role administrator. And back to here, refresh this one more time. We now have user management with everything there un uh, underneath it. We have our product management show up. We have user show up with the actual global settings. So literally the last thing that we have to do currently is go and set where these are actually going, what URLs are these going to. Most of these um, we can set the normal href attribute like we would um, have done at any other time. We don't have to do anything too special about it. Um, the reason, you know, obviously that needed to be different because it's firing a particular server action. These are not quite the same thing. So let's go back into Webflow and let's quickly go and do this. Now, the problem that you're going to see straight off the bat here is how do we actually see these things? If we wanted to, we could go through and we could look at them um, via physically clicking on that and going through the app structure over here and saying, okay, we want to target what part of this we want to target that. Even though we cannot see it, we know what it actually is. So it's not really the ideal way of doing this. What I would do, and this I don't think is exactly documented as the official way of doing it, but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pretend for a moment I'm on my dashboard page and that is the page that we want to deal with. Click this little preview icon, which means that I can use this as though I'm in Google Chrome itself. I can click on user, click on logout, I can enter this login detail in, Scooby do, and I can enter in Walmart demo, and I can say submit. That will take me back to my dashboard. Now I can see everything. I can turn off the preview mode at this point. I can click the refresh button on this and everything is back to editable sort of regions. They are no longer preview type of regions. So now it's as though everything is just back to normal. So let's start off with Fruit Juice International. This has a link wrapped around it and the link is just hash. In this particular case, I don't want this to be hash because I don't want my URL to change to, if somebody had to click it, I don't want the URL to change to index hash or index php hash or dashboard hash or anything like that. I don't want hash symbols. Um, if I was using URL parameters and I had a hash in there, I would then have to strip certain things out before I actually added my URL parameter of question mark, whatever. I'm going to add in a, a silly little piece of JavaScript code over here. That literally means if this is clicked, do absolutely and utterly nothing. So let's go JavaScript colon void open parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon, and in between those parentheses, we are just going to add a zero. Tab out of that, that is now done. Dashboard, what do we want to do when the dashboard is clicked? We want it to go to dashboard.php, which is this exact file that we are right now. Tab out of that, that is now done. User management. When the physical drop down of the user management is clicked, or that, we don't want anything to happen. I don't want anything to happen when that is clicked either. I only want something to happen 
at the point that that is literally clicked and where do I want that to go so we can go and just make up our own stuff for now and we can change it later um, I kind of because I've obviously already built something like this uh, before showing you that was live for a client I kind of know what I want anyway I'm not too concerned about the SEO value of these particular files uh, you know I don't want Google to even know that this exists anyway so I'm going to add in my own simple stuff here dot franchise dot php go to the next one this is going to be view dash edit franchise php so I just want to double check this one I like to in the URL parameters add dashes just the way I like to do it and this one and say add store dot HP this one so view dash edit stores dot PHP some people may see multiple stores this one is add user.php this one is view-edit-users.php under the product management and add product simple add product.php this will only allow you to add one product at a time anyway so that's fine view dash edit products dot php this one here we will physically call it um, let's just see here let's just actually call it as it is manage pricing dot php under user view profile dot php local settings view dash edit dash global dash settings dot php and that should pretty much be us done we have our navigation 100 percent working at this stage each thing is going to a different place i'm going to look through google i'm going to refresh this if I hover over here I can see down in the very bottom left hand corner of my browser at the moment that it says view dash void uh, jo sorry javascript dash void and it's got my parentheses with the zero inside there um, that is actually sorry it's hard to tell with the size let me just click it it does absolutely nothing which is great dashboard takes me to dashboard user management will take me to add franchise which has obviously got nothing view franchise takes me there that's fine add store I'm just looking down in the bottom left hand corner of my screen at the moment at what the little status text says add store view edit stores add user view edit users add product view edit products manage pricing profile sorry view edit profile view edit global settings and that says nothing it's a standard everyday logout action so I would say at this point we are actually fine you can see that the navigation has made this a little bit extra white to show that that is actually where we are at within our navigation at this point um, the last part of this video just before I end up on the entire navigation step is that I am going to be using this navigation over and over and over again on every single page so I really do not see much of a point in this particular navigational field being in here um, I'm going to use something called server-side includes to move this to a completely different folder 
I want the entire header element in my particular case moved across to a file which would be an includes file and in each and every page that I would like to include this navigation I will just call this back in. So from here you can see we'll move to include file. So I click that, we want to move the header and below to a new include file. Pretty much meaning header and everything within it to a new include file. Yes I do. What would I like the include file to be called? I'm just going to call it ink dash header dot in fact yeah dot php whereabouts do I want this to actually move directly within my main directory with all my other files is perfect I'm going to save that and as you can see this has now come up server side include ink php ink dash header dot php so that is it done if we wanted to call that into a brand new page we could do so I will just show you very very quickly we are just going to create a new file let's just call it test.php for the purposes of this we'll open that up sorry I need to save this dashboard and I'd like to show you one other slight uh, possible problem with including these in the next pages. In order for this to show up, we added it into this page manually. When we added this in, it added in certain things manually, such as the JavaScript classes for this, um, such as the cascading style sheets that that may have actually used. Um, and because of that, we need all those things to be in our new page before we even begin which is a little bit of a tricky thing um, if we had to open up this ink header.php just as an example and look at it in code view this little commented out section over here pretty much says that this is an include it includes app connect from a local level it includes bootstrap 4 from a cdn level it includes jQuery Slim version 3.3 from a CDN level or content delivery network. In this particular case, Stack Path or one of those. So that is what it's including. What it, however, is not including, unfortunately, is if we go back to code on our dashboard, you can see here we have very little code in this file because we have moved the header across to another file. But what you can see from here is that we have this server connect role checker, which we know needs to be included. We have this server connect logout, which we know needs to be included. We have these particular JavaScript files. So under here, we've got the bootstrap for navigation. We've got the DMX formatter. That formatter needs to be included because we have physically used the formatter within the role checker. We've got the browser JS, which also needs to be included because we have told it to use this go to, which requires the browser. And obviously, App Connect uh, JavaScript needs to be there, etc. So, what I would suggest that we do just to make this very, very simple is open up the new page. Normally, you include files, you know, if it's a, a card or something like that, may not have these sort of issues. But under these circumstances, I think a lot of people are going to use includes files for navigational elements. And most navigational elements use pretty much the same stuff. So let's just say that we are going to add in the Bootstrap 4, as we do for every brand new page anyway. We're going to add in the App Connect, as we do for every page anyway. We're going to add in our browser element. And we already know that we never changed the ID of this browser element. This browser element was always called browser1. And so because we never physically made that change, we know that it's going to work with the new one as well. Because when we were in dashboard, it was still called browser1. So as long as you didn't change that, because you will need to match whatever change you made on each and every single page going forward. 
the next thing that we need is we need our wall checker so let's just go back here and see what we call that we call that server connect underscore role underscore checker and server connect underscore logout so from here we will go to after sorry we'll go to the dot component server connect go here server connect uh, role underscore checker let's just make very sure of this that that was what we did first role checker was first and if we click on role checker there's no auto load there's the role checker there's no on success or on error or anything to that effect so role checker action login this is going to be the role checker action we want it to auto load so that's great next thing we're going to add is we're going to add another dot component of server connect this is going to be called server connect underscore logout the action for this is going to be the logout action we don't want this to auto load if we look at this one at this logout action we didn't want it to auto load we're running the exact same action and here we've got an on success so let's just copy that we're going to take that and we're going to add the server connect success event and paste that into there and tab if we did not do all of those little steps that i've just done now um, this include file actually would not work correctly it is something Wapl is aware of um, i don't really know in my own personal opinion how they're actually going to go about changing that or fixing that but um, it is something that they are certainly aware of so in this particular instance now all that we need to actually do is we need to bring this in from the um, from the the include file that we've created so after this what do we want to do server side include what type of well where is the file firstly Okay, we'll go and find the file we want that file what is the type of file that it is it's a php include in fact it's a php require but anyway i will always just generally use php includes once we've added that in there let's refresh this you can now see this come up obviously because we've never logged in on the test.php page this is not really going to work as anticipated so that is how that is going to work at the end of the day for me personally to get around this particular problem with these include files um, what i would actually do is something completely different i'm going to close down this test.php and don't save it whatsoever my dashboard really has nothing on it currently that is totally and utterly specific to say that this has to be the dashboard page so in essence what i can land up doing is just going through the finder and duplicating the dashboard page as many times as i need as like a master page sort of thing and pretty much just renaming it to whatever it needs to be so that is what i'm going to do i'm just going to delete this test file that we just made there now and let's go to the finder call up new window here I'm going to open up dashboard.php so documents features international there's dashboard i know already that i've got six navigational elements under here so i need six there three over there that's nine ten eleven twelve so i've got three under there so i'm going to need 12 more files additional to dashboard one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so i've got 12 new files sitting over there that can all be renamed and those are all now ready with every single piece of include information in there etc etc because this is part of an include file um, it's obviously very hard to get to all the parts i'll rather go to the physical include file
and I will want to select it from here. So let's do this through our actual app structure. There's the nav bar, there's the drop down, there's the component, there's our other drop downs over there. So over here, that is our logout one. We don't need that. So I probably duplicated that file too many times, but it doesn't really matter. One of these is going to be called view edit global settings.php. So let's just go to our last file here, right click, rename, enter. There's our view edit. Go to this one over here, view edit profile.php, go to number 11, rename, paste it in there. Go to this navigation here. Go to the last drop down, manage pricing, number 10, rename, paste, enter. Go to that one over there, view edit product, copy, nine, right click, rename, paste, enter. This one, add product, copy, number eight. Rename, paste, enter. This nav item there. Let's bring this better into view. That item, oh, I see that I misspelt this at the time. Let's add in the R, hit tab afterwards to make sure it takes. Copy it. Go to seven, right click, rename, paste, enter. There, add user, copy. Six, rename, paste, enter. Next drop down item, view edit stores, copy. Five, rename, paste, enter. That one, add store, copy. There. So, rename, paste, enter. View edit franchise.php. Rename, paste, enter, and should be the last one in the pile. Add franchise to rename, paste, enter. This one here I duplicated one too many because I imagined that logout was actually a step. It works out fine anyway because once I edit dashboard. Um, I'll never be back at this step ever again. So I'm actually going to rename this and I'm just going to call it something like master. Just so I know that that is the master file that includes just some of the elements to get me started on any new page that I add. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to resave this includes header file because obviously I made a change to the one navigational element. Save that. Dashboard is still fine. Gonna save that in case. And we'll close out of that and close out of that. Um, I hope that this video was informative. We will start with our next video in a few moments, and we are going to be building up possibly the ad franchise page next. Thank you.